Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. This video is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to do on tutorials for projectile motion for grade 11 physics, but it's also helpful for grade 12 physics as well. This first video is going to be looking at time of flight. Now when we're given time of flight, usually we're given three situations. The first situation is a ball or something is launched horizontally off of a surface which is above ground level, maybe a table or at a building, something like that. The second situation is when a, something is launched at an angle but on level ground. And finally, the third situation is where something is launched from a height back down to ground at an angle. Now usually in all these cases when we're solving for time of flight we need to consider the vertical or y component and we end up using the following equation for all three of them and that's the delta dy or vertical displacement is equal to our initial velocity in y times time of flight plus one half times the acceleration in y which is the acceleration due to gravity times time of flight squared. So let's look at each case. First, case one. Now let's say we're being launched from a certain height from the ground, let's say 20 meters. We'll go with 20 meters. And we have an initial velocity of five meters per second. Now when you're launching something horizontally, that initial velocity is your horizontal velocity, or Vx. Your y velocity, or your initial velocity of y, is going to be 0 meters per second because you're not giving any vertical speed initially to that ball or whatever it is you're throwing. From that, we can solve this equation. We know what delta dy is, we know what vyi is, and we always know what a is. So let's try this. So delta dy is equal to viy times time plus one half a y times time squared. All right, so since viy is going to be zero, this whole term is going to just go away. So we're left with delta dy is equal to one half a y times delta t squared. Now in this case, we usually like to make down or positive direction because there is nothing that's going up. So why bother making everything negative when you can just make every vector positive? So that means delta dy is going to be positive 20 meters because it's 20 meters down. So we have 20 meters here. And acceleration due to gravity is going to be positive 9.8 meters per second squared. And we can rearrange that for time. Multiply by 2, divide by 8 and take the square root gives us time as 2 delta dy over a. Now for this example we can plug these into our calculator so we have 2 times 20 meters all over 9.8 meters per second squared gives us a time of 2.02 seconds. Now for all those math people out there shouting at me that I should have done plus or minus, that is true. Um, I should have done plus or minus. However, negative time doesn't make sense. Strictly from a quadratic equation point of view, if we're looking for where this quadratic crosses that x-axis, it's going to happen here. And if we trace it backwards, it's going to happen somewhere over here as well. But we don't care about tracing it backwards. That's not part of our problem. So we're only going to consider the positive value there. All right, so let's look at this example. Now this example, we have some initial velocity. Let's use the same initial velocity. So 5 meters per second. But that is going to be a combination of x and y, because we can write this in components. So this is going to be some angle, theta. And let's say theta will be 45 degrees. 45 is good for maximum range. So theta is going to be 45 degrees. So we can solve for our vx and our vy components here. 
All right, so Vx, that is adjacent to our angle. So it's going to equal uh, our hypotenuse, 5 meters per second, times by the cos of the angle, 45 degrees, which is going to be 3.54 meters per second. And that's to the right. That's our horizontal. And we can do the same thing for initial in y. We don't need to write initial in x because that will never change. But our y velocity will change due to the acceleration due to gravity. And it'll be 5 sine 45. And since uh, 45 is the same for a sine and cosine, we will also get 3.54 meters per second. But in this case, it's going to be up. All right, so what else do we know? We also know in this case what the vertical displacement is. So we're starting here and we're finishing here at the exact same height. Now, even though we've traveled horizontally, our vertical position is unchanged. So our displacement in Y is going to be zero. So we can go and solve this equation for this case too. So we have delta dy is equal to viy, where viy is, we know what that is, but let's just leave it as a variable for now, plus one half ay, again, that's gravity, times time squared. Now in this case, it's delta dy that's going to be zero. And then what I can also do then, since that is zero, and I know that time will not be zero, I can divide every term by time. So 0 divided by time is just 0. And then time can go away in this term, and 1 time can go away in this term. So that's me simply dividing every single term by a time variable. And when I do that, I'm left with 0 equals viy plus 1 half a times time. So now I can rearrange this all for time. If I do that, I bring viy to the other side of the equation. So that leaves me with 1 half ay times time is equal to negative viy. Multiplying by 2 and dividing by a gives us time as negative 2 viy all divided by ay. All right, so that negative might be bothering you. But that's okay. We haven't really chosen a coordinate system. You can choose up as positive or down as positive. doesn't matter. In this case, let's choose up as positive. If we do that, our initial velocity is going to have a positive value. But our acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared down, will need to be negative. So if we plug in numbers, we'll get minus 2 times viy, which is 3.54. meters per second divided by the acceleration due to gravity, which is now going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that negative is going to cancel with this negative. And in this example, we will get a time of 0 0.72 seconds. All right, so the last example is going to be the trickiest. And here's why. Notice that in case one, this term here went to zero. In case two, this term went to zero. In case three, not only do we have a non-zero initial velocity in y, but we also have a non-zero displacement in y. So no terms are going to be zero. And that's going to mean we will have a quadratic equation to solve because this equation is a quadratic equation. So let's use all the same values, right? For a uh, delta dy, we'll use 20 meters, like in case one. And our initial velocity, we'll use 5 meters, like we have in both cases. The angle, again, we'll use the same as 45 degrees. So let's plug in our equations. So we have delta dy is equal to viy times time plus 1 half ay times squared. All right, and let's choose up or down to be positive. I'll just make up positive. It doesn't really matter, though. That means our displacement is going to be negative because displacement is down. So displacement is going to be minus 20 
And that's going to equal VIY. That's up. So VIY is positive. And since we use the same value as case 2, it's 3.54 times time. And then acceleration is going to be negative. That's minus 9.8 multiplied by half. We got minus 4.9 times time squared. And there is your quadratic equation. If you still can't see it yet, let me rearrange by bringing these terms to the other side of the equation. When we do that, we get positive 4.9 times time squared minus 3.54 times time minus 20 is equal to zero. So here is our A coefficient, here is our B coefficient, and there is our C coefficient in the quadratic equation where we would solve it as follows, if you don't remember, so delta t will be minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So when we plug all these values in as these coefficients for time, we will get the following two values, 2.41 seconds, and minus 1.69 seconds. Now obviously this minus 1.69 is sort of taking time backwards, looking at this quadratics to see where it crosses the x-axis. That one we do not want for this solution. So our answer then, time of flight in KC is 2.41 seconds.